I can't really be positive about it tonight, but I'm just going to be open. I'm just going to stay open to it. And it felt so much easier than, again, staying positive or being grateful or being anything. It was just like, I'm just going to stay open to it. I'm just not going to close off. El Roly, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you so much for having me. L, for those who do not know, is the founder of Solly Baby Wraps, which we were just talking about before this. Well, Baby Wraps and now a plethora of other things. But we were just saying, and I was saying, that as a soon-to-be new mother, you are not a new mom in the 21st century without registering for a Solly Baby Wrap. They're everywhere, and I'm sure everyone knows that. Uh, she has grown this company. I just was reading articles now with like $20 million in revenue yearly. It's incredible what you've done. And you also are a um, children's book author, I saw as well. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. Fun. It's so, fun side project. And an investor. I mean, just a true jack of all trades. Can you tell us a little bit about what got you started on this journey? Probably first to Sally Baby. Let's start with <laughs> oh man um okay so 13 years ago i was pregnant with my second baby solomon solly um hence the name and i i'd made uh i i had wore my first uh baby lucy in a in just a regular traditional carrier baby wearing had kind of somehow gone out of fashion i don't know how that happens because it's like such a natural <laughs> thing you know, like the Victorian era or something, like don't hold your baby. I don't know. It's just <laughs> such a normal, you know, biological thing to have your baby close. And my first was was really colicky. So I wore her out of necessity and I, I it really helped her, but I was really uncomfortable. Um, and so with my second baby, I was like, I want to find something more comfortable, but also student um I had finished school but I was still uh, my husband was in school so student budget and I just made this wrap and just this really kind of um basic prototype I guess you could say and just really fell in love with the experience and felt so empowered having him close and feeling like I could still take care of my toddler and 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 then started an Etsy shop I was like there's really something to this this could look really more fashionable and would be kind of this empowering almost fashion statement but I didn't want to trivialize it to that but um but could like empower the new mom or parent to like feel actually really good about themselves um yeah. while they're wearing their baby while they're wearing their baby and so I just kind of I don't know it's an evolution from there that really was um, not that it wasn't intentional, but it was a really organic um, process from there and really good timing with social media. So, yeah, I love that anytime and these are it's becoming more common to have cute baby items now. Like companies are really yeah. focusing it's on like standard. making mothers it's feel cute. Yeah. But it like was not, I feel like even a decade ago. Yeah. And so I feel like going onto your site and seeing that everything I'm like, oh, I would feel really good wearing this makes just like makes you have a little bit more joy during like a really tough period for a lot of moms oh that's so good to hear that's definitely the goal there's just no reason that we should just feel like cart you know horses or something is that what they yeah. are i don't know <laughs> like, sounds right you know just like toting all the things and no, it's true yeah pat horses that's the word pat yes horses. yeah cart horses i was like it feels close but not right yeah i, I got and... where you're going with it so i was just gonna roll with it <laughs> So, yeah, that has always been the goal that it, it's like functionality first, fashion second. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's been really fun. Yeah. What was that like starting a business and now growing the business? Because I guess then you had two kids at that point. Now you have four children. How has that been juggling these two worlds? It just I like feel overwhelmed for you just thinking about it. <laughs> Oh, man. Do you know what, though? I, I've always said that I would have struggled more to work for someone, especially being um, more of a people pleaser. Um, yeah. It was better for me to be able to have autonomy and to set my own schedule on my own. Like, if it was like, if I failed at something, it was failure, which, like, that I've had, I've still had to do work in the people pleasing. 
area that still comes up, but um, but I think in many ways that it actually like was. I I don't want to say easier because yes, it's been really had plenty of challenges too, but it did give me a kind of freedom. It's just how I work. I think I think everybody just has a different. Some people are it's better for them to be able to check in, clock in, and clock out and leave yeah. it behind. And for me, it's just always been better to feel total freedom and and autonomy so that's just always how I preferred it um but so two two years ago we sold the majority shares to a private equity company a really good like boutique um investment firm and so I still sit on the board and oh I'm a minority shareholder and um, last year I actually served as interim leadership there in between CEOs so I'm so <clears throat> involved but not in the same way that I was for 10, 11 years. And oh, interesting. And that that's nice. But also, um, but also, um, yeah, it's been every phase has been totally different. So I don't know. It's almost it is in some ways like raising a child where every phase is very, very distinct and different. So it's like, what is that experience like? Like, or just being a person. <laughs> so just that <laughs> phases of like human, I don't know, personhood where it's just so different in every phase that yeah. yeah, there have been really hard phases, really great ones, but um, but overall, like nothing I think pushes your personal development outside of parenthood, like um running a business. It just forces you to continually like up level and find the next level of confidence, the next level yeah. of like creativity, of interpersonal skills, like everything and um, fear. It it challenges every uh, it, it challenge it's challenged every part of me in in the best hardest way yeah I feel like any business owner that I talk to it's really just a lesson failing really hard and learning how to get back up after every single failure were there moments in starting Sally that you were like I don't, I don't know that this is gonna work like maybe there was one moment maybe there were several where you were just like I might abandon ship oh man uh, so many times, but the two that come to mind, um, one in the really early days when I got my first return, I was like, turned to my husband, I was like, okay, like, yeah, the gig is up. Like, they called me. You don't think like, of that, but that is kind of such a blow. You're like, oh, someone didn't like this. Wait, total rejection. And like, I, that means I'm a fraud. <laughs> yeah. I fooled everyone. So by the transitive place. property. <laughs> And my husband, like, very quickly was like, okay, so you have sold, you know, 500 orders or something. I don't remember how many that time. And this is your first return. So let's, like, do a quick percentage on that. That's a pretty good return rate. Like, I think we should probably keep going. Um, so that was one. But it, it really did feel, it's funny now, but it felt that um, the gravity of it felt. Yeah. Yeah, that, that heavy then. Um, and then the second was when COVID hit. Nobody knew. I mean, I think a lot of people can relate that nobody knew what was going to happen with their employment almost anywhere, I guess. Um, and and uh, when California mandate came out about shipping, um, or sorry, it was like the non-essential. And then there was that there. I can't remember which one it was even, but um, but it looked like we weren't going to be able to ship from our warehouse. And we only had three months of inventory, not even three months had six weeks of inventory oh and i was like um okay well that's that's it our all of our sewing houses our um, fabric mills are in la they're getting shut down and if we can't even ship then we like okay maybe we could find a way to ship it out of state and do it for six weeks um and that's it so that was i, I mean that was like so one of the most sobering days of my life of like okay I have all these employees and they came we had like 18 or something employees it's just like I don't I don't I don't know where we go from here and then so then we luckily were able to assemble it was something with the uh, mandate that we were able to still ship still and by the time that we sold through that inventory we were able to get um our our factory um, our suppliers were able to uh, be up and going and so but the, it's just those those moments right like yeah where it just feel and you're like it was a good uh, ride hopeless 
That was a good ride. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Like. Today's episode is brought to you by Just Ingredients. Just Ingredients is a company that practices what they preach. They offer a variety of health and wellness products without any added sweeteners, sugars, or additives, just real ingredients. I started following their founder, Carolyn, a couple of years ago because I was so inspired by her story of how she healed her mental health through changing the way that she ate and the things that she used. And she founded the company to allow other people to do the same. So I am a huge fan of their protein powder, of their pre-workout, of their electrolytes. They're really amazing products. And the happy news is that they never offer really any discounts and have like one sale a year, but they are offering a discount to our lucky listeners. So if you want to try the products for yourself, use code QBC15 for 15% off your order at justingredients.us. Again, that's code QBC15 for 15% off your order at justingredients.us. Thank you so much to Just Ingredients for sponsoring. Well, on the opposite end of that then, when was the moment or maybe the time period where you started seeing like, oh my gosh, this is like becoming bigger than I ever thought it would? Oh man, I think that um, one of the the moments that always comes to mind is I was pregnant with my third baby. It's just two weeks away from delivering her. And uh, this is in 2014. I just hired my first employee, um, Courtney. She's still with the company and uh, amazing. And we launched uh, we launched a new line. And actually, a photographer, Alpha Snoot, a shout out to Alpha, um, had flown out from New York and like slept on my couch. She shot the line. I like put it up. <laughs> That night while we were hanging out, like, and then drove her to an airport. And on the way back, my phone was just dinging, 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 dinging with all the Shopify sales. And um, I mean, this is, I started in 2011. Um, so, you know, this is not like uh, a few years in. And that launch just performed so well. And somehow, just like intuitively, I knew that something had shifted and like it would never be the same. Like, we were on, it wasn't. It was like that early grind was um, we had passed it and we were into yeah. like this new phase of the business and we weren't, it was the real thing. I don't know. So that's beautiful though. That I, was a good day. I was like driving and listening to Bob Dylan or something and just crying and like it was not baby and I'm just like, we're all going to be okay. <laughs> Isn't it funny though? I feel like that's like that's just life there's there's a really long quote i think it's lr nos too and it's this really long quote and it's like that's just life like you have these super high peaks and then you have these really low valleys and every time you're at the valley somehow you mount again and you get to the peak and and i do think some days like those that day that you're talking about like you're about to have your baby your business is finally taking off they just feel like everything comes together and it really is. Sometimes I feel like it's just one day, like one day where you're like, the universe was working for my good. I just didn't know it. Oh my gosh. Well, I just finished this yoga teacher training. I do a lot of random things. <laughs> and, okay. And, so yoga uh, teacher, add that to the, the list as well. So it was so random, but my uh, instructor, one of my instructors said early on, she's talking about this idea of enlightenment and like yoga philosophy and, uh, and the idea of enlightenment people uh, and a lot of like the ancient texts talk about it this way as well as like it's this you like arrived at enlightenment and now you're there and you live in this space of enlightenment but it's like really that's not, that's not the experience that most people have and my instructor was like i really think it's like these brief moments where like everything kind of comes together and i think a lot of times we miss those and i i'm sure it could happen all day long but I'm just yeah. not, like evolved enough to like feel that all day long but when it does come in those moments where it's like I don't know it's something even more than just like that was all the good things coming together it's just like bliss or something I don't know. yeah no I feel like your soul like really really feels it and like you said though I think a lot of it has to do with just what we're willing to notice I think we have those beautiful moments all throughout our days and we're just so busy that we don't stop to pay attention I couldn't agree more. Do you, on that same note then, maybe it's come from your yoga teacher certification, maybe it has come from your business or the full-time hardest job in the world of being a mother. 
Do you have a best piece of advice that you've ever gotten? I would have to say, so I read it in a book. Nobody said it to me, but um, but Michael Singer kind of did. I don't know if you've read The Untethered Soul or any of Michael Singer's work. Well, Untethered Soul is a good one. Surrender Experiment is another really good one um, of his. But he talks about this idea. Years ago, I remember I had like a Sally Baby book club for postpartum moms for a while. And, um, and we read The Untethered Soul. And he talks about um, this idea of staying open. Like, just like, hey, every day in life, like when you want to close off to life or an experience or a person or anything, just stay open instead. Just like stay open. And it's such a simple idea, but I really think it's one of the most profound concepts um, ever (laughs) because it's like when we close off. So like, um. You know, for instance, like I, I, okay, so I did this yoga training and about a few weeks then, I mean, I did it kind of randomly and just like for healing for some things. And I just thought this would be like good and fun experience and to deepen my practice and all these things. Well, like a lot of things that we do for fun, once it stops being fun, it's like, well, why am I doing with this? And then like five weeks then I'm like, Am I really doing this still? Like, what is going on? 200 hours? Like, I don't have time for this. And, and, but I, I, I remember this idea of staying open. I was like, okay, uh, because immediately after, I was like, well, I should be grateful that I get to do this. But like, I don't know, some like fall, you know, sense of like positivity or something. So, like, you know, I can't really be positive about it tonight, but I'm just going to be open. I'm just going to stay open to it. And it felt so, um, so much easier than again, staying positive or being grateful or being anything. Like it was just like, I'm just going to stay open to it. I'm just not going to close off. And I don't know if that, that is really an intangible kind of abstract idea, but yeah, hopefully I'm making sense. So I get to no, the you class actually are. and I'm just like, I'm just open. I'm not like thinking anything. Like I'm just here, but I'm really here. And I had the most amazing night of practice. And I realized it was just that. It was just open, like that I didn't, um, by not closing off, I stayed totally present. I was like, this is actually the secret to being present. Like what we're all looking for is just not closing off. It wasn't like forcing some false emotion or it's just like, here's my heart. It's just still, I'm just not closing it off. And uh, I've, I've experienced that in really small ways and then really big ways too. And it, um, I think it, um, it, it really um, intersects with like my Christian ideals and beliefs as well. Like it just is, it's just about, I don't know, being still and being, staying open. And uh, I don't know, it affected my life in a pretty profound way. I think that is so beautiful. I I love the entire concept of that because I feel like I feel like we always want to be like like you said, either we have to be super positive about a situation or we're like, oh, like our brains convince us that we have to be super anxious about it. I feel like we never really stop to think about the fact that we can be very neutral. And I feel uh, like from what you were saying, it kind of sounds like staying open is just kind of being like whatever happens is going to happen. And like, maybe at the end of it, the idea is like, you're going to be okay no matter what, but you can just go into it, not saying, oh, this is going to be great or this is going to be terrible, but just, it'll be what it is. And isn't that just like life? Most every experience in life? It's, and it's the best way um, to be with my kids too. When I'm feeling like at my limit or exhausted, I'm like, I don't have to be like the best mom right now. Just be an open mom here. Just love being that. here. And that's like, to me, it's also just living, like actually being open to life and living and closing when we start judging, when we withdraw. When, and like, that's like a mini death. Every time we close, yeah. it's like we're choosing like this, this, I don't know, like it, that's the path toward death. <laughs> then yeah. open is the path toward life and being alive. I don't know. I mean, it's redundant, but, no, um, but. Yeah, neutral. Neutral is a very underrated emotion. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and I love too that you're, it applies to our interpersonal relationships. I mean, like how many issues do we have in the world today 
because people are so closed off and they're just not willing to stay open to ideas, to different people, different cultures. Like, how good would the world be if all of us kind of went in with like a, you know, what can we learn from each other? Or what can I learn from the people and experiences around me? Well, it's so vulnerable. It, it really is so easy to talk about, but but it is vulnerable to stay open. Um, but it would, yeah, it would definitely change the world. I'm with you. Yeah. I think that's a beautiful piece of advice. I feel like I'm going to start using that right away. Uh, that's going to that's gonna be my <laughs> mantra. Maybe that'll be my birthing mantra. I think that's a good one, honestly, uh, because who knows what happens then? A hundred percent. If you're just, it's just non-resistance. It's a, it's a surrender that I think would serve every parent really well. Absolutely. Do you have a worst piece of advice that you've ever gotten? This could be about your business, oh, maybe yeah. about motherhood that just never resonated with you. It really bugs me when people say, like, well, I'm a realist. Like, let me just, like, like, sorry. I'm, I I'm just being it. realistic here. I'm like, you're just give up. Like, I gave up and you should give up. Or, like, it's, like, code for, like, like, I'm a pessimist, which it's fine. Yeah. Like, there are a lot of really funny pessimists. But, um, but, but I do think it's just, like, okay, like. It, it, it feels like the practical, reasonable, like, we should all defer to that. Like, okay, now someone's reasonable and, like, bringing, I don't know, so common sense or something. But the more that I have observed people have used that or when I have, I'm like, yeah, I just gave up. Like, I'm yeah. just afraid or I don't know. So I'm, like, I'm not about the realist. I don't, I don't think it's useful. I think that we create our own reality with our thoughts and so many and so much internally that that's just like, yeah, code for negative. And you know what's funny is everyone who says that almost says it, at least in my experience, like it's a badge of honor. Like, well, you're naive if you are trying to stay positive or maybe see the hope in things. And I'm, I'm the realist. Like I have it figured out. And at least... Again, in my humble opinion, it's a lot more difficult to think positively in life than it is to think negatively. Anyone could let their negative thoughts get the best of them. That's not a badge of honor. Yeah, you're just shielding yourself from potential disappointment. And I'm saying, literally, I'm willing to feel the disappointment or the negative emotion yeah. that may come up if I don't accomplish this thing or if this thing doesn't happen. But like, that's the only thing at risk. It's almost, I mean, it's, it is always the thing at risk is potential for negative emotion which you cannot yeah. protect against no matter what so i'm just gonna be in for it you know like yeah, yeah that, that may happen but i'm still i'm still here with my naive idea yeah I no i think that is so valid and honestly i didn't realize it but maybe now i know that that is actually one of my icks when people say that they are a realist i don't find it endearing in any way shape or quite frankly so i'll just I'm be my you. naive I'm self you. yeah <laughs> Do you have a piece of advice now that you would give to, at first, we'll talk to Elle as the business person, and maybe a piece of advice that you would give um, to someone trying to start a successful business who is maybe where you were like 14 years ago, just making samples and not sure where it could go? On the one hand, I think you just start really simply. You don't have to figure it all out. In the beginning, like I really Googled all along the way to figure out um, what the next step was. And Google is the wrong word. It was really like, I'm, like I said, like uh, I run more on my intuition. And so it's really important for me to stay aligned with that. But the things that my intuition doesn't know, which is a lot, then I can Google <laughs> those things. Um, but I think that you actually talking about, you know, speaking of naive, I think you have to have a certain level of, um, of that intentionally to uh, to start a business, and that's really just you embrace that, um, if that makes sense. And at the same time, I would say um, that every brand, every company tells a story intentionally or unintent or unintentionally, and so it's important to like know the story that you're telling, which which usually can be revealed pretty quickly with like asking why three times. I read that somewhere. Um, 
And, and I think that, yeah, it, it doesn't need to be this like cryptic and um, to, uh, you know, deep of a thing, but, but that took me, I don't know. So, so it's a mixed message there because that took me a while to think, to really articulate what that story was. Um, so it's okay if you don't know it, but I do think as soon as you can articulate kind of your story brand or, um, the reason why you're doing what you're doing and, um, and why it really solves a problem for someone else. Like if you're not solving a problem, I think you should be a business. I don't think that, I don't think it'll work either way if you're not. So, um, but but also just start simply and um, take one one step at a time. You just don't have to have all the answers. I know that that's like not a very concrete answer, oh. but uh, but most people just psych themselves out and don't do it. And I just think you're just not going to know until people are looking. They'll spend so much time trying to find the right business. Like wait, but and then they'll come to me or to my husband and say is this one going to work? Like, is this idea, like, will this work? And it's like, no, no one has the answer to that. There's not a right yeah. business and a wrong business. They're all going to have challenges. Um, and they're all going to have strength. It's just it's neutral in that sense. Most businesses are, it's about like being very, um, it, it's all you know, running it and being receptive to like what's working and what's not working and making those changes really quickly and um, adapting and the faster that you can adapt you can you can start with the worst business idea and it like the worst but it will evolve and evolve if you're just very receptive to uh, feedback and to just testing a lot of things so i don't know that was all over but um those are kind of all the big areas for me that i would hit for as a no, new I, I don't know. oh i would think that would be really helpful to anyone also I I think in some of my marketing classes or something, I mean, they always say like people buy an idea more than they buy a product. And I do feel like that messaging is what people overlook sometimes because a lot of times they have a great product. But I feel like the companies that really succeed and you would know this more because you invest in companies and this is your expertise. But I feel like the companies that really succeed, they have that message that like sells itself. Like it wouldn't even matter, honestly, what the product was at that point, because the message is so strong. And I feel like you've created that with Solly as well. Like even just you talking about it, like you're like, it feels like you're like hugging your baby and you can be as close to them and it, it like replicates the womb. And it's like, who could who could not want to buy a product that appeals to like our a biggest instinct as mothers? Well, that's really a kind compliment i i we, we're kind of moving out of what they were calling like an experiential economy and into a transformational economy and that like oh maybe 10 years ago we wanted just an experience maybe even less than 10 years ago we wanted to just like okay yeah provide provide an experience through like um you know i'm gonna use this product and this will be fun or i'll feel this way for a minute to transformational which is really like, no, I want your product to make me the person that I want to be. And so if you can tap into whatever your product or service is in a transformational way, like you're telling a transformation story. So for us, it's like bringing that overwhelm, uh, underconfident or needing more confident, um, the stressed out mom or dad or caregiver and transforming them to like confident, empowered people, like, you know, parents, uh, that's a, that is a transformation. And so yeah. I, I think that when you know that when you have a transformation that you're offering and you can offer that confidently um, and tell that story over and over and over, it's just you're showing the transformation over and over and over. And um, then, yeah. then I think that you can be successful. Absolutely. That, that is such an interesting concept. I, okay. Do you have a best piece of advice now, mom hat, or maybe wife hat, or a more personal hat that you would give to people who maybe are struggling a little bit right now? And maybe it, that is especially new moms who 
go through a lot of changes. I remember a few years ago, I was really struggling to figure out something with homeschooling my kids. We've done like, we've always been into alternative ed and um, like right now our kids go to like a barn, our backyard barn. We <laughs> got like the school in our barn. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, got a lot of Why crazy not? things going on here. <laughs> and they're a part of like other schools. My that is charter high school but um but anyway I was trying to figure out something with school that year and it was like I just need more time for work and myself and so I'm gonna do this and this and these other schools and just choosing some other options and my sister mom McKenna um said yeah she was like totally you should do that and she's like I really think it's just about the experience that you want with your kid and that's gonna be uh, the best choice um I think I kind of like the business thing I was just talking about. I kept looking for the right answers. I was just searching and searching and searching that year for the right school, the right education, the right everything. And that so often in life, it's not like the right school. And especially as a parent, it's not like this magic answer that everybody else has or someone else is holding or Google has or whatever that you don't. It's like, what is the experience that you want to create? And that um, has really stuck with me because it really opened up to like, yeah, what's best for me is best for them. And like, what's best for me, I always is what's best for them in the sense that like, there is no, <laughs> there's a part of me that is so intrinsically connected with their well being. And I like that part of me. Um, that I would never choose something that would be at the expense of them. So I don't even need to like worry about that. Like I, yeah. I, I see moms worry so much that they're like choosing, making choices that are selfish or that are wrong or that are, and you're just, you're so interconnected, your identity. And I think that's a beautiful thing. A lot of like, maybe that doesn't sound like the most feminist thing to say, which I don't care. Like it, 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 they are a part of me and I want them to be yeah. a part of me and my identity. And I love that part of me. Um, and that I'm going to choose something at their expense, like ultimately, you know, like we're going to course yeah. correct and we're going to figure that out. And so just trust yourself and trust um, and focus more on the experience that you want to create so that you can enjoy it too. Because if there is one thing, <laughs> it's true. It is that mom create the weather in the house like i absolutely yeah. it's like the worst and best thing i can't have a bad day without everybody else having a bad day and i'm just i just want my own bad day like stop no. this is my bad day it's you forfeit yours. that <laughs> yes. totally and and the flip side of that is like wow how amazing like if i take care of me and i'm feeling good like mostly they're feeling pretty good like there yeah. are still of course things that come up but I don't know it's like when when I flip it that way or reframe it that way it's like actually just added responsibility for me to take care of myself 100 percent. I I think it's like the message that the least selfish thing you can do is to be a little selfish as like I again I am not in that realm yeah but i even know with my own mom like when she's happy and she's doing well all of us are happy all of us are doing well it's just like you said we are we're intrinsically connected to our parents and love dads you, you do great things yeah. but especially moms they just set the tone for everything and that does mean this added responsibility of being like okay well, then you you need to do the things that make you your best self yeah, like starting a business or whatever that means. Yeah, or not whatever starting that a business. Is. Or, yeah, like, yeah, really, the sky's the limit. And that, like, I have truly become my best. Like, hopefully, I'll continue to find my best self. I have a lot of room for improvement, but like, I've continually transformed myself more since I've had kids and reached like greater heights in creativity and like my every aspect my spirituality my mental health everything since becoming a mother it's like it is the most amazing call to transform ourselves into our best selves and not perfect selves that's like that's like such a you know 
it's the only idea anyway. It's like, what does that even mean? It's just yeah. our uniquely best self. So yeah. Yeah. Big, big That's fan. That's really beautiful. <laughs> That's, I love all of that. Last but not least, I feel like I could ask so many questions, but we'll finish it off with this one because here on the podcast, we love quotes. Clearly we love inspiration. Do you have a favorite quote that has always stuck with you or maybe a favorite quote right now? Anything that you've always remembered? Uh, Mary Oliver's quote, uh, tell me what it is you plan to do with your one wild and precious life. Maybe somebody has already said that here. No one has. And I love, love, love that quote. It's just like, you know, we're all going to die. And so... Like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do with this time that you have? It just is like the best kind of like uh, positive fear yeah. that I can instill in myself is is that reminder that like this is and uh, and I say that uh, not lightly. My brother passed away last fall, and so it's like it's, it continually the quote takes on new meaning every season of life every year every month every um it hits differently um but it's true it's just true and so this is it and we don't get another you know shot at this so so what are you doing today right now you know how open are you are are you to, to life um yeah that one has always struck a chord i think that's really beautiful and i've always loved that quote and i really feel like if we all said that to ourselves every morning we would face the day just with i agree like it makes you like a little fearful because you're like oh the one word but then at the same time the wild and precious part of it you're just like that's exactly what this life is it's wild and it's unpredictable but it is the most precious beautiful experience that we will probably ever have and Again, going back to like our full conversation, are we going to take the time to notice that today? Are we going to be open to noticing all of the precious things that are happening around us amid all of the wild? I love that so much. And can I just add to that, that like living in body in that one wild and precious life, like that's this yoga training has been such a good reminder for me of like, being in my body in this like very technological world that I love, we are so often literally disembodied and disconnected from our bodies. Mm -hmm. Like what a beautiful thing that you're about to have this baby because no more embodied experience that I've ever had than giving birth. Um, but like, let's be in our bodies more, whatever that looks like to really be and living. That's really beautiful. Well, I'll, uh Thank you so much. This has been such a wonderful chat and I'm just so glad that we got to hear from your wisdom and all of your beautiful words. And thank you again for creating a product that has clearly taken the parenting caregiver world by storm. Let everyone know where they can go to support you now, where they can go to support Solly and how we can be there now for you. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to have this conversation with you. You're so amazing. Um, just, I guess, conversation would be a cool word. <laughs> um, okay. really is a skill. Uh, uh, you can find Solly Baby at, um, on Instagram at Solly Baby. Please do, um, lots of motivation and, uh, and educational, uh, tips and tricks and community and all of that. And then, uh, me personally, I, my Instagram is just Rolly. So at L Rolly, where I am sometimes. Beautiful. <laughs> hey, <laughs> with all you have going on, I think that should probably fall at the lower end of the totem pole. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, L. This was such a privilege. Thank you. Thank you so much. And to everyone listening and watching, thank you for tuning into The Shift. Let us know what you think of the episode. Don't forget to subscribe. And we will see you next time. Thanks, guys.